Good morning. We start looking at the book of Proverbs today. And Proverbs is, is uh, known somewhat as the wisdom of Solomon. And much of it is uh, wisdom of Solomon, wise sayings, uh, talks about a lot about common sense. Uh, but it's not all just by Solomon. As we get to the end, there's uh, some that are the, the words of Agur, A-G-U-R, however. And, and then uh, the words of Lemuel, L-E-M-U-E-L. You know, so there are, there are other sayings here. And, and, you know, while Solomon had asked God for wisdom and understanding, basically wisdom, as to be king and to be leader, he was, he was granted that. And, and so maybe some of what's in here, this is just my thought, that maybe some of the wisdom of Solomon is, is things that he, there's something that he's passing on. And, and I say that uh, partly because of uh, chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Hear, my child, your father's instruction. Do not reject your mother's teaching. For they are a fair garland in your head and pendants for your neck, and and I think about the saying, you know, we, you know, when we're kids, you know, we believe everything, and when we get to be teenagers, well, mom and dad don't know anything, and then when we get a little bit older, we understand that mom and dad probably knew a whole lot more than we gave them credit for, and and so it's you know, so I, I say that you know Solomon may repeat something that he learned early on because we do learn a lot from our parents and hopefully from our grandparents and and other adults in our lives as well but so the 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 book of proverbs uh, in some ways i you know some of sometimes when i read through proverbs it's you almost get tired of it, all these little two or three verse deals that are put together but but there's a lot of wisdom there's a lot of stuff in Proverbs that, that we should pay attention to. And, you know, and, and the, the first verse of verse one says the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David. And when we get to chapter 30, it's going to tell us, you know, the, the words of uh, Amor or whatever that guy's the auger. And so much of this is, is Solomon's wisdom being passed on. He says, he starts with, for learning about wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for gaining instruction, you know, all of this, you know, it's, it's prudence for the young. Let the wise also hear and learn. And then verse 7, I've got underlined, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despite, despise wisdom and instruction. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we, we run across people, and sometimes it's, you know, we are this way. Um, you don't learn. You don't want to learn from somebody else. And, you know, the saying, you can't learn from someone else's mistakes. And, you know, in our culture today, we're trying to discount a lot of history. And there are people that will say that, well, the Holocaust never occurred, or this didn't happen. And, and, and we're blaming stuff that's happening today on, you know, things that happened, you know, five, six hundred years ago to maybe our ancestors or whatever. But, you know, what happened to mom and dad? What happened? I mean, yeah, it can impact who I am, but it, you know, it, um, we, we need to learn from the past and we need to be able to go forward and we need to, um, you know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it's to know that God is God it is such a, a big, important thing. And, you know, I have, I have I said I've got this verse 7 underlined, but I also have written in there, you know, where it says, fools despise wisdom and instruction. I have April Fool's Day. And, you know, and that's because of a story that, you know, this, you know, a person who this judge thought was a fool wanted to have a holiday for themselves or whatever, you know, and I don't remember how, how it goes, but he says, you do have a holiday. It's called April Fool's Day. But, you know, if you don't listen to the words of others, if you don't learn from history, I mean, if you saw a fire and somebody told you it was hot and you said, no, it's not, and the only way you could learn would be to stick your hand in there and, and get burned, I mean, that wouldn't make any sense. And... So we need to we need to learn, and and so much uh, to begin is that, 
You know, hearing God's word and, and knowing God's love and God's grace makes a lot of difference. You know, so it, you know, like verse seven says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And then verse eight and nine, as I already read, talk about listening to your mom and dad because, hey, they, they've got a lot of wisdom. And then verse 10 kind of talks about those you hang out with. My child, if sinners entice you, don't consent. And how often do we see people that, that get sucked into peer pressure? I mean, peer pressure is such a big deal, especially, especially for you know, kids growing up in their teenage years and stuff. They're, they are so much want to be a part of the in crowd and be you know, um, popular that you know sometimes as youth i did a few stupid things i know <laughs> and and Cheryl's probably nodding her head in there right now as she's listening but you know but but we do we we struggle sometimes and and we get sucked into things that we shouldn't because of peer pressure and because of you know sinners enticing you you know it's just you know, like Satan, oh, did God really say you'd die if you'd eat this? You know, did God really say, you know? And so it's, you know, there are so many things in the world that that would separate us from God and from one another that we need to really be on the watch that way. Verse 17 says, for in vain is the net baited while the bird is watching. You know, if, if it's... Um, you know, to set a trap for somebody when they're watching, I mean, you're to like, to, you know, you, you bait this, you set this trap for them when they're there and, you know, they're not going to fall for it. They understand that, you know, so um, all of those different things that way. Verse 20 says, wisdom cries out in the street and in the square she raises her voice. So, I mean, knowledge, wisdom is all around us. We, we need to be paying attention and, and learn from nature and from, from those around us and everywhere else. <clears throat> um, starting like verse 23, you know, it says, Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I'll make my words known because I have called and you have refused. And then it goes on, you have ignored my counsel. You, you laugh at calamity, I'll mock you. Uh, when panic strikes, your calamity comes, when distress gangues, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, he's saying, I told you so. You know, when, you know, if, if we wait, if we wait until the last minute, you know, I mean, it, it's too late. And if we, mock God, if we forget God, if we, you know, if we hear that there's a, uh, say a tornado coming and, and we don't seek shelter and we're standing outside and all of a sudden, boom, here it is right in our yard. Well, it's kind of late, you know, and it's, you know, that would be a horrible thing to say. I told you so, but yeah, you know, there are so often that, that things like that happen. And, and sometimes as parents, I mean, we want to, Say that to our kids is, you know, if you listen to me, you know, I told you so. I mean, but, you know, we've got to be careful with that. And, and you know, with our, with our friends and with our spouses, we need to be careful as to, you know, throwing the I told you so's in the face. But yet, it, you know, the, Solomon is reminding us that, you know, we need to learn and we need to listen because there's so much wisdom all around us. In verse 32 he says, for waywardness kills the simple and the complacency of fools destroys them. And we're seeing a lot of complacency in our world today. Oh, that's not going to bother. That's that's not going to affect us. You know, here we live out here in North Dakota or wherever. You know, there, New York's troubles or Chicago's troubles, that's never going to affect us. You know, the, the people flocking across the border unchecked aren't going to affect us. Well, all of a sudden... You know, Texas is shipping these people to these other cities that say, hey, that's not going to affect us. We're way too far. But it does, you know, complacency. And that's, again, uh, probably not a real good example that I should use, but but complacency, saying that, oh, I've got time, you know. Uh, I'll go to church, you know, when I get to be 70 or 80. Well, you know, some people don't make it that long. I'll believe in God when, you know. Well, you know, complacency uh, gets in the way of an awful lot of stuff that way. In the last verse of chapter 1, 
Those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. And it, it's just, you know, knowing God. It, so we can live our lives. We can live each day knowing that, I mean, if I was to drop over right now, I'm 100% confident in God's love and God's grace and God's forgiveness. I, I don't have to, oh man, I should have, you know. Um, verse 2, or chapter 2, quickly, uh, it goes on in verse 5. You will understand the fear of the Lord. You will find the knowledge of God. For God, for the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come wisdom and understanding. God is not going to steer us wrong. God is going to tell us, you know, it's just like the Israelites. You know, God said, you know, if you do these things, you know, you'll have my blessings. If you turn away from me, you know, it's not going to go so good. So listening to God is such a good thing to do. And may you hear God say to you today and every day, you are my child. I love you.